Hello, everybody. This is Blaine Radden with Clear Center. And this is Dave Loper. We are here to talk to you about Clear Glass, a great product that we have that will help you consolidate your management and environment and orchestrate everything from the on-premise to the off-premise. So let's talk a little bit about what Clear Glass is, David. Let's talk about the two different versions of Clear Glass that we have. The community version is free forever. This right. is something that they can download today on top of Clear OS. Tell them how they get that. They just download a copy of Clear OS. They can use either the community version or the home or business version, and they can just uh, grab it out of the marketplace. The Clear Glass business is something that they can also download in a Clear OS business uh, marketplace today. Or community. Or community? Yeah, absolutely. You can run this on either one. Yes. So let's talk about some of the benefits of Clear OS. It uh, allows you to manage unlimited clouds. It gives you the ability to do scripting, scheduling. Uh, it gives you a nice uh, graphical user interface. It also gives you some monitoring and alert logs for you. What's the difference between what's in the community version versus what's in the business version? So the community version is really kind of designed if you're kind of more of a hobbyist or you want to you know, see what it's going to do for you. And in a single user administrative environment, it's really nice. But if you're going to have like multiple admins and you need to like set up partitions about who can manage what, then you're going to want to use the, uh, the business version. But yeah, I mean, getting started with the, the community version is a great way to, to see what's going on. And we're going to show a lot of those features today. Awesome. Let's go ahead and look at the, the product itself. So this is Clear Glass. It's our dashboard for Clear Glass. The first thing that you would do is set up a new cloud. I'm going to click on the cloud down here in the bottom. Yeah, without any clouds, that first uh, page is going to be kind of sparse. It's going to look pretty, 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 pretty deserted. So yeah. th these are the clouds that are available today. We're adding as we go. Um, basically, any cloud that has an API-driven interface uh, is something that's a potential, potential for us target. to, to yeah. manage. Um, some of the more popular clouds we've got are Azure. Um, we've got KVM uh, via Libert. We've got VMs, uh, where vSphere. We've also got DigitalOcean. Amazon. Amazon. Google Cloud. Uh, several others. So if there's a cloud in here that you uh, don't see and you like it, please let it, give us a... Uh, uh, drop us a line at sales at clearcenter.com and we'll take the, that information and we'll continue to build out the clouds that are supported on here. Um, tell me a little bit about what this other server means. Oh, that's a really important uh, category. So even if you don't have any of these clouds, you can benefit from the management that Glass has by putting your various different Linux or Windows servers into uh, these interfaces. You basically make your own cloud, so to speak, of either on-premise or off-premise equipment um, that you know all you need is the uh, your IP address or host name for it and you know an SSH key and uh, essentially it will add it to uh, the things that you can manage um, we support SSH and we support RDP um, your browser has to be able to handle an RDP URL for that to work and then for the SSH key you can SSH directly to that box using that key from the glass interface so it really makes it easy to get into uh, your servers that you need to and to, to manage them from a, a command line space. We actually use this quite a bit in uh, some of our on-premises deployments uh, in order to like add machines that aren't part of these clouds. Very nice. Let's show how easy it is to add a machine or a cloud. So you come into the interface, click the cloud you want to add. It's going to ask for your credentials, whether that be an API key, whether that be a password or uh, uh, password username. It's going to ask for what's appropriate to get into that particular uh, cloud that you're trying to get into. One of the things you'll notice is if you go into DigitalOcean, for instance, they are very project oriented. So it's going to ask you for your, I mean, not DigitalOcean, I was thinking uh, packet. It's very project oriented. It, right. If you don't put in a project key, it actually won't turn it on. That's right. You can't add stuff in packet. <laughs> different, different providers have their different requirements. And uh, we have how-to documents that will show you how to onboard those. Usually it's just a couple of questions because these different providers have different mechanisms and ways for you to access their APIs. Um, but usually after putting the couple of pieces of credentials in there, you have the cloud essentially, and now you can start uh, adding machines. Incidentally, if you already have like machines in these clouds, what you're going to notice is as soon as you add them, all of your machines are just going to start populating it in here uh, for management. So you don't have to go through and add every individual no, machine. No, it's going to query the cloud that you have. And that's true with the Clear Center. 
um, one as uh, the Clear Center Cloud as well. And while Clear Center doesn't have you know virtualization or of machines and stuff like that, we do have a, a concept of cloud and management. And so you're going to see all of your uh, servers that are listed in the service delivery network when you pull that up. Awesome. One of the things that they'll notice when they look at these interfaces, uh, if I were on the Amazon tool managing my cloud and I were doing it on this side, that API is instantaneous. So whatever I do here will show up in the Amazon instance or in the DigitalOcean, wherever you're working with. This gives you the ability to pull multiple clouds in so you don't have to go to each individual uh, cloud provider and use their tools. You can use one single set of tools. That's right. And once you learn this platform, you know it makes it really easy for people to manage those those different objects and different clouds. They don't have to become an expert at DigitalOcean, an expert at Amazon Web Services. You know uh, there are some things that that you can only do in those uh, other interfaces. But as far as the day to day maintenance and management, or pushing projects or scripts um, through the the Clear Glass interface. Um, it, it makes it really easy to kind of treat all of that as a, a, you know, operation, operationally the same way. So let's talk about what we have here on the dashboard. Up along the top, you see these little green buttons. These are the clouds that are set up. So we have an Amazon EC2 cloud in Northern Virginia. We've got ClearCenter, and this is interesting because ClearCenter actually uses its software delivery network as a cloud service. So all of your ClearOS boxes that are out there and all the information you have when you visit your ClearOS SDN uh, is all available and, and readily uh, made available for you. We've actually got two different ClearCenter accounts here. One is made up of just physical machines and one is a combination of physical and virtual machines that I have access to. Um, we've set up a DigitalOcean account and a Packet account. That's right, and you're not limited to just having uh, one thing of, of one cloud, right? So you can have different uh, different clouds that kind of overlap each other. That's especially important in like that other category, right? You could say, well, these are all my um, my Ubuntu servers that drive uh, my accounting, right? And so you can put them in kind of in their own management space. So they'll see some basic information around here. The nice thing up here on the right hand side is it tells us what our monthly burn is right now. So right now with what we have open, this is a demo account, but we have a couple of machines up and running. Um, we're spending $42 a month just in this demo account. And we'll see, we'll come back to that later and see as we add and, and take things off, that that will change real time. So we've got some monitoring capabilities, we've got logging that, that goes on in the dashboard. All of that will be available to us, both at the high level dashboard level as well as the machines. Yeah, when you start drilling into machines, it's gonna show you who did what, where. And this is the big difference between the, you know, the community and the business version, is in the business version, you're able to track down who did what when. Uh, and so that's really important from a compliance standpoint and from you know, just kind of a best practices standpoint. So, so let's talk about these, uh, this machine interface. These are the machines that are up and running. You can see that up here at the top, we've got a community, uh, community OS demo running. Uh, we've got a business, a demo one, and a NAS server that are all shut off. So I'm gonna click on this little Amazon symbol here to the right on these three that are shut down. And you can see as long as what's uh, available to be done is common to all of the machines I click on, like start in this instance, I could then click on it and I can start up all three machines at one time. That's a beautiful thing to be able to orchestrate your environment like that. That's right. And you know, there's a lot of things that you can do via orchestration. You know, uh, in the business version, you can even orchestrate things like scripts and being able to have, you know, multiple things happen. We can set up schedules to uh, do various different things against different uh, machines. There's this concept of tags as well. You can tag machines so that they have certain types of uh, metadata about them. Like, you know, say for instance, I have you know three different machines. Out of all the machines that I have that have a certain RAID controller, right? and I want to update the firmware on them, and so I have a script that will update the firmware. Well, I can, I can search against those tags, and we put a, a lot of effort into making the search dynamic. For example, I've got machines here that have a certain shutdown tag that I want to, uh, to pull, and as soon as I start pulling that shutdown tag, it pulls that up. You know, for example, I can type in uh, you know, NAS here, and you know, it'll, it'll get just the machines that uh, are associated with NAGS. And it's gonna pull the tags, it's gonna pull the titles. You could type in EC2, for example, and it's just gonna pull all of your EC2 instances. See, That's awesome. Let's go into one of these machines and take a look at what we can do with it. So in this ClearOS community demo, you can see that I can see the monthly costs. It allows me to go straight out to the shell so I can 
go to the command line and start to work on that Absolutely. machine specifically. It also has the web config. This is a clear OS box, so it has the web config uh, interface available to us. And if I go in and click on web config, it jumps me right into the server. I can log in and I can start working on that server directly. That's a very powerful integration with ClearOS. So if you're using ClearOS machines, there's a tight integration between the two. Absolutely. We've got, we've got some nice monitoring tools that are in here so that you can scroll through and kind of see what goes on there. Very powerful tool on each individual's uh, server so that you can see what's going on in that machine. It also gives you all the information associated with the hypervisor, uh, what's going on in the, in the uh, IP address, Everything you would need to, to manage that machine is right here available for you. That's right. And, and the other thing that uh, we've built in is a, this, this concept of, of scripting and schedules. And this is where, you know, it, it gets less sexy from the sales side, but it was really sexy from the administration side because being able to script uh, very complex tasks is, is really rather important, um, especially when you're talking about uh, deploying things at scale. You know, for example, one of the scripts that I've been working on this weekend, essentially what it does is it takes a, a default machine um, that, you know, comes from a manufacturer and blows it away with uh, a clear OS uh, install that then kicks the, the boot process and does with the, uh, the, the kickstart within clear OS, does all of the setup. So I can go from uh, just a bare metal machine all the way to, you know, fully managed and installed clear OS with uh, just by running one script. Uh, that's powerful. Uh, when you're talking about deploying software, you can do that. You can have scripts that do maintenance tasks. Uh, for instance, if you had to you know, check on a certain thing at a certain time, it will do that. And tying that into the schedule means that you can you know, set it out to run nightly or, or whenever. So let's go ahead and show people how we, how we set up a new machine. This is what I think is really nice. So I can come in here pick the cloud that I want to operate on. This is going to be a EC2 Amazon cloud. I'm going to give this a test uh, number five. Um, we're going to pick the image that we want to operate in. In this one, I'm going to go back to my favorite, uh, Clear OS. I'm going to, it'll ask me where I want to place this. This is important if you want to make sure you spread things out in the Amazon environment so you don't have Or if they need to talk to each other, right? Yeah. And then this is, if you're familiar with Amazon, this is the Amazon language in terms of how you get to pick your cloud. I'm going to go to a T2 uh, nano environment. Um, important thing here is the keys. You could have multiple keys. So these are our sets of keys to Amazon. But if I were a uh, uh, partner, I could have my keys and I could have my customer's keys. Yeah, Multiple especially especially in the business edition, you can segment out the keys and who has access to the keys, right? So that uh, that's segmented. That's really important because one of the things you can do is give people the ability to start and stop machines without actually passing the keys to them. So set a budget, tell them how much they can spend, but they don't, actually don't have the keys. They only have the ability to do it inside the interface. Now, the other thing that you can do here is we have the ability to run a script. Now. We can put an inline script here on something we want to do as we uh, launch the machine initially, or we can select an existing script. One of the interesting ones we've worked on here is we've got a NAS deployment. Uh, HPE has put together a recommended solution as a NAS environment, and there's several packages that they recommend you install. We've basically set those off as a script. You can go get them from a GitHub pull them down, and then when you launch the machine, it'll launch all the extra packages on top of it, and it'll be fully built when you get there. The beautiful thing about that is, you know, the collaborative work uh, that the community can do around scripts, right? Because you can put those scripts up on GitHub and have them be available for yourself or other people, and, and how they work in different environments can be improved over time, even by other people. So look for more and more scripts uh, to, uh, come down the pipe and be uh, available for clear.glass type things. One of my favorite scripts is one that one of our uh, folks put together. If you go into a cloud environment and ClearOS is not a native application, but CentOS is, he's put together a flip script that where you can just run this script after you've started up your machine and it'll turn your CentOS environment into a ClearOS environment. It's pretty powerful. Love that. So I'm gonna pick just the NAS environment, come down here and say launch. And you'll see that it'll immediately launch that machine in Amazon, start it running, up and running. 
I've got to kind of scroll down here to see where it's at. We're looking for test number five. Johnny five. Where is it at for me? Well, why don't you choose a search? Oh, that's a good <laughs> idea. So let's just look for the test machines. That's test five right here, and it's in the process. And from here, once the pending turns on to running, I can jump out to the shell. I can set up the machine. The, right. the installation's already done for me. I just register the system, and I'm done. Turn on monitoring. It's one button, you know. You want to enable monitoring for this particular box? It's as simple as that. So that's the machine feature. Um, just finalize, you can sort these machines not only by the search but by tags. Let's add a tag to a, to a machine just to show what that does. If you come in here and add a tag, we actually, when we set up new machines, we always call them demo. Uh, demo machines, demo machine, so that everybody understands that that's what that is. Um, we're going to talk about scripts in a second, so we always label it a shutdown if it's something we're going to do. So I'm going to add, you can have multiple tags. So we'll just do shutdown. So you can set these up based on your customer, your environment, the type of the machine it runs, whatever tags situation you want to use. Yeah, and what's powerful here is that you can, you can have a schedule uh, orchestrated against a particular tag. Um, so, you know, if there's something that you need to do on a, on a nightly schedule, um, you know, say for instance, you have a, a wonky old machine that, you know, it, it runs into problems and you got to restart it every night, right? Instead of learning how to do that shutdown command on, on that machine, you can just have a shutdown script that, you know, adds that to there. And then if you resolve the problem, you just remove the tag and boom, you're done. So you've done one here that could be very useful if your dev team works uh, during the days you've set this up so when the when my team puts together a demo machine if we forget to turn it off you go behind us every two hours and clean up and yeah. turn everything down so we're not wasting money that's right so that's that's really powerful because when you talk about cloud resources and stuff a lot of times you have these things that are burning but the whole idea of the cloud is to use it on demand and that's a that's a powerful thing that you can do with schedules is you can tie schedules and scripts together you also have the ability to set up teams so that you can provide access to resources, to keys, or uh, set parameters based on, in this case, we set up a dev team member. You can add rules. Uh, you can al uh, allow or deny uh, access to certain machines. You can do things where they can just do certain tasks. You can set conditions for how it works. This is a really powerful tool, especially, again, for those partners who have multiple customer sets they're trying to serve, you can set this up by customer or by uh, end user type. Well, it's also critical for uh, certain compliance, like with HIPAA and Sarbanes-Oxley, for example, you gotta know some of these things about who's making changes what. And so, you know, that's a really important feature of the, the business edition that will really save your bacon when it comes to compliance. Let's talk a little bit about scripts. We've mentioned it. We've kind of shown how they're used. Let's talk about how easy it is to add a script. In clear glass, the, usually the add button's down here in the bottom right-hand side. If I come down here and type script, I'm just going to do a test script, a uh, little bit of a description. I can come in here and tell it whether it's an executable or an Ansel playbook. I'm going to do executable. And then talk about the different sources you can do and how would you how would you choose which one to use? Yeah, so if you have a specific URL that, you know, is, you know, for your your, your own company and maybe it's uh, kind of uh, firewalled and protected, right? It's your own internal scripts, but you have your own internal change control process. You can have it be a URL. Inline scripts are ones that you're going to define right here, right? And you're going to just paste the code in there. Uh, GitHub is a really powerful one. For that, you can use... Uh, go ahead and select it. You'll see you can set up basically the the repository and the file. You can set it up as a YAML file, or I can, e or you can even just do .sh and have it be shell scripts. Right? The YAML will execute the uh, shell scripts as well, and that's a really easy uh, place to get started with scripts. They're they're hugely powerful, and you can do some very awesome things with them. That's awesome. This is a real powerful tool. We're actually going to start putting out more and more community scripts and encourage our community members to, when they do scripting, to make it available to the broader group. That's right. And uh, yeah, if you, if you have a, a script that's working really well for you, let us know in the community forums and we'll see if we can't uh, clone your, your, your script in uh, our script library. 
Images is basically just the functionality of the of the cloud you have set up and what That's images right. they make available. Um, keys we talked about. We only have our own keys on here, but you could have multiple sets of keys and choose which ones. Yeah, to you use. just add as many uh, as you need. You can import keys that you're using. Like if you're already using Amazon, you're going to have a pro public private key pair for using that. You just import that into to here, and you're good to go. And I can give access to resources without. The individual I'm giving those resources to access to the keys so that they can't do True. anything except for what I, exactly what I tell them they can. That's right. Okay. Give me a real quick definition of what's going on in networking. So network networking is essentially the network stack that's available to uh, to you from the cloud provider. So um, we only have uh, Amazon here as machines that have uh, the capability for network. So we're only seeing the Amazon. Uh, uh, networks that are available here. If we had set up uh, other different networks within Amazon, those would automatically be reflected here. And if we create a network for the Amazon network, it'll promulgate up there. So that that really is a function of the provider so that you can have machines talk to each other in private networks. And when would I use zones? Zones are used when you've got some DNS uh, type things. I know the Google uh, Cloud Engine, for example, is very heavily uses uh, the zones for being able to give names to specific uh, uh, VMs and having the DNS integrated. Well, we've got a really powerful tool here. I'm excited about it. There's so uh, much to show in this little time. I mean, it's already long, right? We've already gone long and uh, there's so much to show. Let's go back to how this thing is packaged. So today they can download this from the marketplace, uh, a community version for free and start using it. Um, the clear glass business will be available in the marketplace. And we're also uh, going to, in the future, have a SaaS version. So these two versions that we've got run on top of ClearOS, there'll be a SaaS version in the future, correct? That's right. That's right. So look for that and uh, jump in and start using it. We really would like the feedback in terms of what cloud you'd like to add, have us support and also what features you'd like to see and which ones are the most powerful features you're using uh, in today's environment. Thanks for listening to us. Yeah, thanks, guys.